In today's video, we're going to talk about women quotas and whether or not we need them. Hi, my name is Virginie and this channel is all about helping women to stand out and go after their dreams. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and to see more, subscribe the button. To reach gender parity in business and politics, there are two main paths, the organic path or the quota path. Let's start with the organic part. So the positive thing about it is that it's giving everyone time to adjust and to build a smooth transition. But I think that looking at the negative aspect of it is much more interesting. So let's deep dive. The organic path toward gender parity and gender equality is very, very slow. So worldwide, we will need 108 years to reach gender parity. I link the article below. However, it looks a bit better for Western countries. Only 61 years. So I guess everyone has to answer the question for themselves. Are you willing to wait 61 years or 108 years? Do you want your children to experience true parity one day? Personally, I'd love if we could speed up the process. So you may be wondering why is it taking so long with the organic way? Well, there are a lot of factors and obviously this topic is very complex, but if we try to make it simple, think about the opportunities out there for women. If we want women to catch up one day, sooner rather than later, we need to give women more opportunities to learn, to grow, because otherwise nothing's changed or it changes very slowly. It's human to hire someone you can identify with. So it's human that men tend to hire more men and also people tend to be risk averse. So when you hire someone you can identify with, you have the illusion that you are reducing the risk of a bad hire. However, you forgo the chance to tap into diversity. Now let's look at women quotas. The positive side of it is that it's rapid and dynamic in bringing the change. But again, let's look at the negative sides because it's much more interesting. So one of the negative side of women quotas is that it's not based on merit. But then again, merit and the best person for the job is something very subjective and which depends on what perspective you take. Here the key is to start to look for different criteria because men and women, we are different. So we need to expand our pool of criteria so that we can take a good decision. So a friend of mine has a big, a big team and in her team she has two identical roles and one it's done by a man and one it's done by a woman. And she told me the other day that after a couple of months, if someone had asked her to choose between one of the other, she would have said, oh, I need the man. He's super uh, dynamic, he's strong, and I really need to choose him. Whereas the woman was kind of slower and was not really standing out. But that after six months, she said that she would keep the woman. It took some time for the woman in her team to find her position, to feel comfortable, to stand out and to be a very strong asset. But over time, she really outperformed the man doing the same job. And that's not all. The man is earning 10% more than, than the woman, which is really another topic. So another common negative side of women quotas is that the talent pool is too small. So to this point, I feel that people who say that, they are lazy. Because if you want, you can. If there is a will, there is a way. So there is always a woman who can do the job, but maybe she's not saying it out loud. You know, biologically speaking, men have a lot of testosterone, which helps them uh, stand out and be more confident than women. So I can understand that at the first sight, People would say, oh, but the, there is no women who can do this job or there is no women in the talent pool. But the thing is, there is always one woman out there 
and there are so many examples of strong and capable women not being chosen and being overlooked. So here, the key is really to look differently, find this woman and give her the opportunity to grow and to learn and to step into her power. Think about all the time men get a promotion or a job for which they don't have the qualifications. This happens all the time, but when it happens to a man, we say he has such a strong potential. But when we talk about a woman, we say, oh no, she, she's not good enough or she doesn't have enough experience. So the third negative side of women quota is that women have different interests than men. So to me, this is so laughable because interest is not biologically based. It's society based. It's the way we are growing up and the education we get. So this we can influence and we can change, it can evolve. You just need the chance to experience this new thing you don't know anything about. And so it's a non-issue. So the last negative side of quotas is for women to feel uncomfortable when they receive the job or promotion because of her gender. And I agree, it's tough to be the pioneer, but then think about the symbol you are. Think about the fact that it's not only you, you are standing there to represent all the women out there who want to rise and grow but are not offered these opportunities. So if you are lucky enough to be given an opportunity, take it, embrace it and think about all the women out there who will thank you for being a role model and for bringing more, a more female side into companies. So it's bigger than you and I think it's the message. Don't let jealous people get to you, just focus on what you can bring and what you are representing. Another thing is stop comparing yourself because men and women, we are different, but this also means that we bring different things to the table. So instead of comparing yourself, just focus on what you can bring. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you agree or disagree with me, I would love if you would let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, see you next week.